Welcome to section 4.9a. All right, general people, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about acids and bases. So for right now, we're going to go ahead and stick with the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases. For an Arrhenius acid, what I'm going to do is I'm looking for something that is going to increase the concentration of H plus ions in water. Or in other words, something where I go ahead and dissolve it in water and it's going to make a few H plus ions. So here are some examples of acids. And what you can see is if I have something like HCl, it's going to break up into H plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. Now, if it generates one H atom per molecule, we call that a monoprotic acid. However, there are things that are diprotic acid. Diprotic acids are going to make two H atoms per molecule. So an example is H2SO4. H2SO4 is going to give up one H plus ion and make the bisulfate ion. And then this bisulfate ion can give up its H plus to make the sulfate ion. So an Arrhenius base is something that's going to increase the OH minus concentration in water. So popular examples, NaOH and KOH. So if you look at NaOH in solution, it's going to break up into Na plus ions and OH minus ions. Now, one molecule I want you guys to watch out for is NH3, and this is not very intuitive. What happens is NH3 is going to react with water, and it's going to make NH4 plus and OH minus. Now, again, the more important thing is it's going to generate OH minus in solution. And so if it increases the concentration of OH minus in solution, well, that means it's considered a base. Now, there are species that can act like an acid and a base. And if a chemical compound does that, we call that amphiprotic. But let's focus on what chapter four is all about. And that is we're looking at classes of reactions. So the next class of reaction that I want to talk about are neutralization reaction. In particular, a neutralization reaction is going to involve an acid-base reaction. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and have equal moles of an acid and base. And if I put these in equal quantities, I'm no longer going to have acids or bases at the end of this type of reaction. So to take a look at what's happening here, let's take our acid, HCl, and our base, NaOH. Now, if I were to put these together, well, I can swap partners. So the H will go with the OH. So that's going to make HOH, or more commonly written as H2O. And this is going to have the physical state as a liquid. So an acid-base reaction is going to generate liquid water. The other product that is going to be formed is generally called a salt. And that is an ionic compound. So in this case, the Na is going to combine with the Cl. So for a Chem 1A, we are going to stick with strong acids and strong bases combining. Later in Chem 1B, you'll talk about weak acids and weak bases. But for now, don't worry about that. Now, if I want to look at the net ionic equation for a strong acid and a strong base coming together, well, that's going to be H plus plus OH minus gets me H2O liquid. And this is going to be the net ionic equation for all strong acid base titrations. So let's move on to our quiz question. If I were going to go ahead and add acid to NaOH and calcium hydroxide, each one molar, and I'm going to assume that each one of these solutions has the same volume, which is going to take more HCl to neutralize? All right, general people, what you will see is that NaOH is going to be Na plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous. And so in reality, if I were just to look at the base component for NaOH, one molar NaOH, what I really care about is that it is one molar in OH minus. Now, if I look at calcium hydroxide, I get Ca2 plus aqueous plus 2 OH minus aqueous. So this is a dibasic compound. 
So what that means is, is that a one molar solution of calcium hydroxide really is two molar in OH minus. Now, because this is a greater amount of base, it's going to require a greater amount of acid. So the calcium hydroxide is gonna require more moles of HCl to neutralize. Well, I hope that made sense, Chem1A, and remember to stay safe.